Thank you for taking the time to watch this in-service training presentation on temporary cardiac pacing with the PACE 203 brought to you by Cardiotronic Ozipka Medical. The PACE 203 is our dual chamber external pacemaker. The PACE 203 provides a vast array of pacing modes with an intuitive dial interface that allows the user to easily change sensing and stimulation settings in both of the chambers. The PACE 203 is capable of providing rapid atrial and ventricle pacing along with in-depth statistics. Other notable features include a long battery life, small form factor, and its lightweight. This proven, reliable technology is the reason Ozipka Medical is OEM for Medtronic, St. Jude, and Oscorp's external pacemakers. The main purpose of cardiac pacing is to maintain adequate cardiac output. The PACE 203, in conjunction with a stimulation lead system, can be used whenever temporary atrial, ventricular, or AV sequential stimulation is indicated. The PACE 203 has applications where such stimulation modes are indicated for therapeutic, diagnostic, or prophylactic purposes. There are no contraindications with regards to the use of PACE 203 for temporary cardiac stimulation for therapy and prevention of arrhythmia. The state of health of the patient, however, can restrict the choice of operational mode and stimulation parameters. A stimulation mode involving atrial sensing is not indicated during atrial fibrillation. High rate or overdrive stimulation therapy must only be used in the atrium. Let's walk through the components and layout of the PACE 203. The lead terminals, marked as one on the diagram, are found on the top of the PACE 203. The large light blue dial, marked as 2 on the diagram, sets the basic or stimulation rate. The small dark blue dial, marked as 3 on the diagram, sets the atrial sensitivity threshold. The large dark blue dial, marked as 4 on the diagram, sets the atrial stimulation amplitude. The small light blue dial, marked as 5 on the diagram, sets the AV delay. The large white dial, marked as 6 on the diagram, sets the ventricle stimulation amplitude. The small white dial, marked as 7 on the diagram, sets the ventricle sensitivity threshold. The emergency button, marked as 8 on the diagram, activates emergency pacing. The soft keys, marked as 9 on the diagram, allow the user to select different options and settings depending on the context. The yellow key button, marked as 10 on the diagram, locks and unlocks the PACE 203. The pause button, marked as 11 on the diagram, pauses stimulation and allows the PACE 203 to measure and display the patient's P and R wave amplitudes. The on button, marked as 12 on the diagram, and the off button is marked as 13 on the diagram. Ventricle stimulation LED, marked as 14 on the diagram, blinks with each pulse. The ventricle sensing LED, marked as 15 on the diagram, blinks with each sensed ventricle event. Atrial stimulation LED, marked as 16 on the diagram, blinks with each pulse and the atrial sensing LED, marked as 17 on the diagram, blinks with each sensed atrial event. The lead terminals accommodate pins from 0.9 to 2 mm. The positive terminals are red and the negative terminals are black. The battery compartment, marked as 18 on the diagram, houses the 9 volt battery. The PACE 203 is able to operate in a variety of pacing modes depending on the user's needs. Using the soft keys, the user can select common pacing modes. DDD, VVI, AAI, and VDD. Please see the PACE 203's instructions for use for more information. Please note that the following protocol describes how to set up the PACE 203. It is a suggestion and not a substitute for established hospital protocol. In addition, it is specific to the default manufacturer settings of the PACE 203. To start up the pacemaker, please make sure that the pacemaker has a battery and turn the pacemaker on. Check the battery status and replace the battery if necessary. To prepare the patient, place the stimulation electrodes and extension cable, but do not connect them to the pacemaker yet. You can use the below flowchart to determine how to set up the PACE 203. If the patient does not have intrinsic rhythm and requires emergency stimulation therapy, then you can use fast setup. If not, and the default values on the PACE 203 are adequate, you can use fast setup. If the default values are not adequate, use manual setup. Regardless of the setup method, the emergency button can be pushed at any time if needed. Turn the PACE 203 on and check the battery. Replace if necessary. Make sure the PACE 203 indicates appropriate pacing settings. The below table indicates the manufacturer's default settings. 
If you have the appropriate settings, connect the pacing wires via extension cables to the terminals A and B. With the PACE203 hooked up to the patient, check the ECG monitor to ensure proper capture. Press the lock and unlock button if the device is locked. If there is no atrial capture, increase A-STEM to 2-3 to three times the capture threshold. If no ventricle capture, increase V-STEM to 2-3 to three times the capture threshold. Press and hold the pause key to display the patient's P and R wave amplitudes. Please use caution if the patient's intrinsic rhythm is unstable or unknown. Please make sure that the A-sense is one-half to one-third of the sensed P wave. Make sure the V-sense is one-half to one-third of the sensed R wave. Frequently check the capture and sensitivity thresholds. To manually set up the PACE203, first make sure that the device is on. Set A stim and B stim to the minimum value and set the rate to 10 beats per minute lower than the patient's heart rate. This avoids competing stimulation. Connect the pacing wires via extension cables securely to the A and B terminals. Press and hold the pause button. The PACE203 will display the patient's P and R wave amplitudes. Use caution if the patient's intrinsic rhythm is unstable or unknown. Make sure that A sense is one half to one third the P wave amplitude and the green LED above A is flashing. Next, make sure the V sense is one half to one third the R wave amplitude and the green LED above V is flashing. To set the capture threshold, monitor the ECG and set rate to 10 beats per minute higher than the patient's heart rate to ensure capture. Increase A stim until capture. This is the atrial capture threshold. Set A stim to two to three times higher than the atrial capture threshold. Increase V stim until capture. This is the ventricle capture threshold. Set V stim to two to three times higher than the ventricle capture threshold. Finally, set the rate to the desired value. If the patient requires immediate emergency pacing, simply press the emergency button. This provides asynchronous stimulation at 80 pulses per minute at high stimulation amplitudes. Please note that previous pacing settings will be lost when the emergency button is pressed. If the sensitivity is set too high, there is the risk the pacemaker will inhibit due to sensing an event that is not related to the P or R wave. In this example, there is failure of appropriate ventricular firing due to ventricular oversensing. To avoid this, the sensitivity value should be set to one half or one third of the patient's P or R wave respectively. If the sensitivity is set too low, there is the risk the pacemaker will inappropriately pace. In the two examples shown, atrial and ventricular undersensing causes asynchronous pacing while the patient has intrinsic activity. Again, the sensitivity value should be set to one half or one third of the patient's P or R wave. If the stimulation amplitude is set too low, the pacemaker may fail to capture the chamber. In the two examples shown, there is a failure of atrial and ventricular capture due to low stimulation amplitude. To ensure proper capture, set the stimulation amplitude two to three times higher than the capture threshold. Complications can arise from temporary cardiac pacing that the user should be aware of. There could be a significant rise in the patient's capture threshold, leading to a loss of effective stimulation. There could be a significant drop in the ECG signal amplitude after lead dislocation, resulting in loss of sensing. An abnormal pacemaker setting can cause erratic rhythms and compromise stroke volume and cardiac output. Inappropriate high sensitivity setting, sensing of the R or T wave in the atrium or P wave in the ventricle, and detection of interference can lead to ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and death if not immediately recognized. Overdrive stimulation in the atrium or rapid atrial pacing can cause accidental conduction into the ventricle, causing ventricular arrhythmia. Battery failure or exhaustion leads to failure to stimulate. The pacemaker is protected against accidental liquid spills. To clean the device, use a towel or sponge moistened with water or alcohol. For disinfection, the enclosure of the pacemaker can be cleaned with hospital cleaning agents. Do not submerge the pacemaker in water or any other cleaning solution. Do not use any scrubbing powder or liquid on the device. And always refer to the instructions for use. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please contact your local representative if you have any questions.